Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to my channel. Today is Saturday, February the 12th, and it is my six month post op day. It's also Luna's fifth birthday. It's also Hobbit Community Day. So if you play Pokemon Go, my code is linked below. Add me as a friend. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place today. I'm about to go Poke Hunt and I'm about to go grab some food and bring it back home because uh, it is Saturday. I don't really want to go anywhere, but I've got to do some things. So yeah, my operation to have the cancer removed via a hysterectomy and um, I can't pronounce the other one. I'm going to put it right here on the screen, but it basically removes the ovaries as well. And I also had a, um, what I couldn't remember in my last video or last couple videos, whatever, um, was a lymph node like dissection or whatever, um, was, is where they basically took a biopsy of my lymph node to make sure that it hadn't spread further into my body. A part of me is like, okay, how do you know? Like, how do you a hundred percent know that that shit is gone? Um, because I'm paranoid anyway, but September 1st, I found out that I was cancer free, but I'm pretty sure when they took it out, I was cancer free. So it's been six months and, um, I just want to talk about some changes with my body since that's happened. Um, if you have no interest in this video, you can click off. I have a whole bunch of other videos, but um, I do have a Valentine's video that will be up tomorrow, the day before Valentine's Day. So I'm very excited that I actually completed a video and it will be up on time. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the changes in my body. So... Um, I talked about this in a previous video that I'm not such a raging bitch anymore. Like my internal monologue is just kind of like chill now. Um, and I wish I could have had this taken out 20 years ago, honestly, cause I am 42. I will be 43 in April and it has caused me nothing but problems since day one, really. Um, so yeah, the problems that I that I had basically were I had PCOS. I don't know if I can say I have PCOS because I don't have the O anymore. I don't know. Um, PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome and basically you have irregular periods. Um, sometimes you are infertile or you can't get pregnant. I never wanted to get pregnant so um, thankfully that never happened for me. Um, you have hair growth, you have hair loss, uh, so I got all the horrible side effects, except for, um, I never had any kind of cysts on my ovaries until recently and I had endometrial polyps. So I don't know if that's the same thing as the polycystic, like the cysts that grow or if they're kind of all grouped together or whatever, because at first they said I had uterine cancer and then they said I had endometrial cancer. And so I had cancer, you know, it was there, so... Um, and the thing that like has pissed me off a little bit throughout this whole entire journey since I found out, everyone's like, oh, that's why it's so important to go get checked. And, oh, that's why you should have been taking care of yourself and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I did. I have. I have been OCD about going to my appointments since I was 16 years old and got the depot shot. So for people to be like, Oh, you should have just taken care of yourself. Like that makes me want to fucking throat punch you. No, because that's not the case. And, and the kicker, none of my tests came back abnormal. The only thing that came back abnormal, um, was my red and white blood cells were slightly elevated because I had cancer, I guess. I don't know. Um, and I had vitamin D deficiency. That's it. So for people to be so assuming and say the things that they were saying it was really pissing me off but I was like not in the mental state to address it um but like later on I did I was like you know for all of you who said yeah, I should have been taking care of myself uh I do take care of myself and I go religiously and everything came back normal so even if you get a normal and you feel like something's wrong you better find a good doctor that listens to you and goes the extra mile that will do the test that you say, hey, I wanna get this tested. Just keep those things in mind when you have an issue and you know, you know your intuition tells you something is wrong. I thankfully had a really good doctor who ordered a ultrasound and was able to find that I had, that was basically how she put it, full of polyps. So, um, 
anyway, I'm not here to really talk about what happened before that. Um, I'm here to talk about my six months in, I guess, recovery. My six months in menopause because I am going through menopause. The beginning stages were horrendous. The night sweats, the hot flashes. Oh my God. I thought I had bad hot flashes prior to my hysterectomy. Absolutely not. Nothing. Nothing could have prepared me for sitting there and, and having like my shins break out in a sweat. Like, and it came from like, like it just came from within and just out everywhere. Like my head, my shoulders, my chest, my stomach, my toes, like everything was drenched in sweat. I went through so many sheet changes, so many clothing changes, and it just... It, it was bad. And then I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> Yay. Um, and so I had a really bad flare. Both of my wrists were just killing me. So they gave me, what did they give me? Methyl, I forget what it's called, but it's a steroid. And baby, let me tell you, I had not a pain in my body anywhere, ever. Nowhere, nothing. I, that week that I was on steroids, um, it was a low dose steroid anyway. So it was great. It was chef's kiss. I loved it. I was like, can I be on this as needed? And they were like, no, nah, 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 nah. whatever. And I get it. I don't really want to be on anything like that, but I literally had no back pain, no knee pain, no body pains whatsoever, no aches, no pains. The only side effect I had was the hot flashes on steroids are next freaking level. Like, oh my God, it was horrible. Um, so I don't miss that stage because I still get a hot flash ear every now and then, but they are nothing like they were. And it might be because my oncologist prescribed me Paxil, which has a multitude of different, um, it can help a multitude of different things. So with me started taking Paxil, my night sweats have really diminished. Like I don't wake up in a puddle of sweat and have to wash my sheets and change my clothes and take a shower and everything. And so I can actually get up in the morning and not be a sweaty, gross mess. So that has helped tremendously, I think, but I'm also on like a whole bunch of like other things. I'm taking Claritin D because, um, this is kind of a health update as well, because I did go back to the doctor. I did get a regular doctor. Um, I've only had an OBGYN and a, um, oncologist since I dropped my primary back when she wouldn't do any of my like any of my tests she wouldn't she wouldn't give me a pop smear or anything like that I'll link the video up there I believe uh one of these corners will have the video that I talk about um you know what had happened and why I went to a new doctor um so I finally got a new doctor I really like her and I like her nurse and um but I have high blood pressure so Right before my surgery, my blood pressure was like normal. It was really weird. Um, you would think it would be like through the roof, but all through the whole process of me doing um, all my surgeries, because I've had now two surgeries pretty much within two months of each other, one in June and one in August. And doing those two surgeries back to back, everything, they would test my blood pressure. They would test all kinds of stuff. I had so much blood drawn, so much stuff done. And my blood pressure was never really um, an issue. Uh, throughout the whole thing and that was really weird so when I was going to my doctor for my like checkups after I had to come back like every four weeks I think in the beginning and now it's every three months I believe because uh, I went in January and I go back no did I go to my oncologist last yeah I went in January and I don't have to go back until May. So it's every, I guess, four months. February, March, April, May. Yeah, four months. So it's every four months now that I have to go back for the next five years, I think. I think it's like for the next, no, for the next, for the next three years. And then it's every six months for the next, for the following two years. Because I got to go for like five years to make sure that everything is, is good. And they don't do like a pap smear anymore because there's nothing to do they do a you know a vaginal exam and everything like that so I went to my primary my blood pressure is high um and so this last one it was like super duper high and 
I don't know. It, it could be stress. It could be diet. It could be, it, and I know part of it is hereditary, but, um, she wanted to put me on high blood pressure medication and also high cholesterol medication because I am on high cholesterol as well. So I have been eating like a trash goblin. Um, pretty much through from Thanksgiving up until about, um, mid January, maybe beginning of January, I was eating everything possible that was horrible for me. I'm talking Taco Bell. I'm talking processed meats. I'm talking, um, chips, anything and everything, lots of little bunt cakes. And I don't even do sweets. My taste buds have changed ever since my hysterectomy. Like I want sweets now, but I don't crave them. I still love salt. So I got to stop all that. Um, so, and I was drinking sodas. Oh my God. I was drinking sodas like no other. Like I was having, I like I was addicted. I, it was bad. Like my dad had bought when he was here for Thanksgiving, he bought a um, bunch of Cokes. He forgot to take them with him. So they were here with us. So what did I do? I drank them and I continued to buy like Cokes. Just, it was, it was bad. Okay. I am not a soda drinker anymore. Like I don't consider myself a soda drinker anymore. Every now and then I'll be like, Oh, okay. I'll have like a Dr. Pepper or, or something like that. Um, but most of the time I have my water and speaking of hmm. most of the time I have my water. I wasn't even drinking water like that. It was like, I was forcing myself to drink water because I was so addicted to Coke at that point. And I don't even really like Coke. Like it hurts my teeth. Um, it, it's yeah, it was weird. So I was eating like a trash goblin. I was drinking all the sodas. I was eating all the things. I was eating all fast food. I'm talking McDonald's even. Um, I was eating garbage and I paid for it. I'm paying for it still currently. Um, so I had high blood pressure. I have high cholesterol. Um, my vitamin D level has not dropped, but it has not raised either. So I'm still deficient. I was a 16 when they found out that I was deficient. And then, uh, with the medication that they prescribed me, uh, which I talked about in a, in a previous video, I had like a month's worth of pills in that first pill. I felt like a new person. And then after that, I, they didn't really do anything, but, um, the, I guess that bumped it up enough to put it into a different bracket. So instead of being 16, it was 18.3 and it's still 18.3. And that was back in June when they tested that one. So I'm still vitamin D deficient. I take vitamin D. Um, I take a multivitamin. I take hair, skin and nails because my hair is very thin and it's not from dying. It's from PCOS. Um, I have male pattern baldness. So I have a bald spot like here, like at the crown. And I don't know if that's ever going to change. I don't know. I've tried a lot of topical things. I've shaved my head so that I could start working on that stuff. Um, it just, nothing seems to work. Um, I haven't tried Rogaine or like the women's version or whatever. I haven't tried that yet. Um, I've been kind of afraid to try it. I really don't like to take anything as it is anyway. So uh, I've just kind of been dealing with it. And I, you know, when I have my hair dark, I spray that spot with um, like root touch up. It works for covering up bald spots too. So the more you know. Um, what else? Um, oh, I take hair, skin, and nails. I take the uh, Goli Ashwagandha gummies, which I started taking those to improve my sex drive. Uh, I've already gone through almost the whole entire bottle and nothing. Uh, and that's taking two gummies twice a day. So, I mean, maybe they're like making me chill. They're supposed to be like calming. I don't know. I don't think they're doing it for me. So, um... I won't be taking those after I finish the bottle. I also take um, Claritin D because when I went to the doctor, I had for the first pretty much first month of this year, maybe three weeks out of January, I had vertigo. And um, I was diagnosed with BPPV, which is benign paroxysmal positional or per positional paroxysmal vertigo. And basically it means like, if you're in a certain position and you move out of that position, the whole world spins. And it was horrible. I think I touched on it in my Nespresso video that I hadn't really been filming like I wanted to because I had vertigo. And so the reason that I have BPVV is I have bilateral retracted eardrums. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm still waiting on a call from the ENT and that is 
uh, I think the end of, I think it was the end of January whenever I first went to my doctor and still nothing. Um, and then two weeks later, which was the third of February, I went back and that's when she was like, I'm going to put you on high blood pressure medication. And I was like, no, no, we're not doing this. And she was like, okay, well, what do you want to do then? Cause you got to do something. And so I told her, um, I said, I've, I've done it before where I've got myself off of blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication by, uh, exercise and diet. And she goes, okay, how long do you want me to give you? And I'm like, uh, she's like, look, I'm going to give you three months. And if you don't make any improvements in three months, um, then I'm going to put you on meds. I'm like, okay. So I have lost 11 pounds since my doctor's appointment on the third is the 12th. Um, I'm kind of maintaining the 11 pound loss at the moment. I haven't gained any back, but, um, I stopped drinking sodas again. I up my water intake again and I love water. I, it's not hard for me to drink. Like I fill this up like five or six times a day, if not more, it's, I love it. Um, I don't struggle with drinking water except for when I was drinking all the soda. Oof. But yeah, um, I've stopped eating meat again, except for salmon because salmon, I need the omega threes. Um, I, I need to eat more of those type of foods anyway. Like, um, and all the things that like I sat down and I was like, okay, what foods lower blood pressure? What flu foods, what foods lower cholesterol? Um, uh, what foods, um, aggravate our uh, you know cause inflammation what foods do this what foods do that she also thinks that i have uh, arthritis because i'll be sitting for a little bit and i'll get up to go do something and i'm like uh, uh, stiff and then like after a few walk you know paces i'm i'm okay she said that sounds like arthritis so they just passed the medical marijuana here in mississippi so maybe I can get on that and help with some of the pains I've got in my body because I can't take my beloved ibuprofen anymore because it messes with your high blood pressure and it also messes with your kidneys, I think she said. So I was taking uh, ibuprofen 800 pretty much every day. I would take one and it would help with the pains in my back and my legs. Um, I do have osteoarthritis in my spine. <sighs> Seriously, when I say all these things out loud, I'm like, geez, I'm falling apart. I'm only 42. Um, so yeah, I've got to get on the ball and I have been eating better and I have not been eating like fast food, anything fried, anything. Um, I haven't been eating like a trash goblin. Uh, I did have like some vegan chicken sliders yesterday. They were so freaking good. Um, they were like, uh, from Gardein. They're like the ultimate plant-based chicken patty or whatever, but they're like the ones from Popeye's. Oof, they were so good. So, um, the only thing was that, like the bun had milk in it or something, but I don't even drink regular milk. I have almond milk. Um, my creamers do have it in there, but like, I'm trying to like switch out all my stuff again. Uh, I don't want to go back vegan because obviously that doesn't work for me. I'm still going to eat fish and I'm just going to do what I need to do to fix the inflammation in my body because even though I don't have the O in PCOS anymore, I still have the inflammation. Um, yeah. So, and it's, it's really weird. I wish I could just have like a full on test done of everything that's like going on in my body and be like, okay, you can fix this by doing this and fix this by doing that. Like if it was, if it was that easy, everyone would do it, but we're going to convert our guest room into a area where we can work out. We're going to get some workout stuff so that we can do workouts here at the house. Um, but we're going to get a Murphy bed so that we can just boop, put it up on the wall whenever, you know, we're using it for what we're using it for. And then we have guests, we just pull the bed down. So, um, what else? Um, hair growth, uh, or hair on my body. I used to have, like, it was overwhelming the amount of body hair that I had on my body. Um, it was... And I'm sure this is TMI. Like, again, you probably already clicked off the people who thought this was TMI in the beginning. So, um, my legs, my arms. I shave my arms because I have tattoos. So, I like to have that. Plus, I'm 116th werewolf. And I've joked about that for years because it would be very hairy. And, like, I'm pretty sure I have videos where you can see 
my big old poofy hairs and I, I just don't like it. I never liked it. It was to me, I felt manly and it was because I had extra testosterone and I just felt manly and I didn't like it. There's nothing against women who don't want to shave, but me personally, I don't like to have hair on my body. I just don't like it. It does not, when you have a hair growth situation where, you know, it's not normal, like you just have underarm hair, crotch hair, leg hair, and a little bit of arm hair, and you're fine, and you have peach fuzz everywhere else. I can understand not wanting to shave or being okay with having, you know, grown out pits or whatever, which I'm all for. I don't care. You do you, boo-boo. For me personally, because I had a full back of hair, like hair on my breast, hair on my chest, um, hair on the backs of my arms, um, hair on my stomach, my fupa, my legs, like my are everywhere, my face. Um, I am very anti-hair. I shave my face every day. Uh, that is the only thing that has not changed is my facial hair. Everything else, my back, peach fuzz. I have blonde peach fuzz on my back now. And there's like a couple little areas that still need to be shaved because they're black, but that's it. And the backs of my arms, like back here, nothing. Um, even my, um, my KP, my ketosis, Polaris, whatever, KP, it, look it up. But anyway, on um, the little red bumps and everything, even that has diminished. Um, that could also be because I started using the, um, the tree hut scrubs because I finally was like, okay, I'm going to give these a try. Yeah. It took me to like literally last year to try those things. So, um, so the face is the only thing that hasn't caught up, but everything else, like my hair growth on my arms is very, like whenever I shave, it takes me like, I can go almost a whole month without shaving again because it's not so prevalent anymore. Same thing with my legs. Other than the fact that they're pokey, you don't really see it. Um, the ones on the, the ones on my stomach, the ones on my chest, breasts, um, but the main area, my back, I'm not so self-conscious about it anymore. I'm still self-conscious about my face. I will go out with fur on my face. I don't care because I wear a mask anyway, but it's just, it's, it's a pain in the ass and I don't like it. And I really would like to get rid of it, but I don't like the way those, like the hair removal things, they hurt so bad. I'm such a baby with that shit. So, um, but that's like one of the main things I've noticed with having the hysterectomy besides the inner monologue, not being so raging. Um, the night sweats have kind of calmed down because of the Paxil, but the hair growth, the hair growth has been the number one thing. Um, and like my just taste buds and everything have kind of changed. And I don't know. I, I feel like I wish I would have done this sooner, but I didn't have a valid reason other than I didn't want kids and I had irregular periods. But, um, because I had a medical reason to do this, uh, it was mostly covered by my insurance. Right now I'm paying on uh, $3,800 left over from my surgery. Uh, I pay 50 bucks a month for that. And then I'm still paying on my first surgery. I think I owe like $1,300 on that and I'm paying 50 bucks a month on that. So both of them just auto draft, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month because you know, that's all I can do right now. Uh, it, this would have to happen right after we just bought a house. So, well, it was already going on. I just didn't know it. I don't know how long I had it before I went and got it checked. Like they said it was slow spreading and they said it was like, it was a small spot. So I feel like maybe at the end or maybe mid 2020 is maybe when sometime in 2020, cause I don't think I had it before then or else it probably would have been a lot worse but I didn't have like an actual period period in 2020. I had just weird sporadic spots. Um, so I think it was like growing in 2020. So another thing that I've been working on is the scars. Um, mine are, I mean, yeah, it's only been six months, but mine are dark red in the lower ones. They are really like purpley and red. So I started looking into things for scars and I was going to get like the, I think it's like Mederma scar or something or whatever, but it was expensive. So I got this bio oil instead. Um, and it basically is for scars, stretch marks, uneven skin tone, aging and dehydrated skin. Um, so I've started using it on, um, 
my the whole stomach area i use it like on the sides of my breasts because i'm a 44 double d and it's like they've got stretch marks they've had stretch marks forever um i also started putting it on my face because i am 42 so you know what the hell so i use this twice a day on my scars and then in the shower i've been using the new watermelon um the tree hut sugar scrub this one says for hydrated youthful looking skin it has shea butter watermelon and vegan collagen and this is a new one but i also have the exotic one and i have the cotton candy one these smell so good i love them i've been rubbing it all over my stomach um my like my breasts and any areas that i want to add the collagen and the elasticity back into so, and then when I get out, I use the Tree Hut Tropic Glow, which is a firming whipped shea body butter. Um, it has shea butter, kupuku butter, pistachio, and guarana extracts. I don't feel like this is sticky at all. This I've been putting just like all over my body whenever I get out, especially on my stomach. Um, but, and I've used it multiple times already and it's like barely even, it smells really good. It kind of reminds me of the, cause I think it's the kupuku butter. It reminds me of the one from, um, oh, the one in the yellow, the bum bum cream, um, the Sol de Janeiro, that one. It reminds me of that, that smell. I really like it. Um, so right now, those are the things that I'm using to help with the scarring and to make them diminish. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments. Let me know. I'll go try it out. Cause at this point I want to try everything. Um, I also got some Ambi cream to fade some dark spots that I have um, in areas that don't really see daylight that much, <laughs> mainly my inner thigh. Uh, they're just darker than they should be. And I think it's because I've been overweight for all my life and, you know, I'm just trying to do what I can do. I think this six month post-op update is over. Um, I am working on my health journey. I'm probably not going to post a whole lot of that here unless you guys are interested in a health journey, weight loss journey, whatever, because I've got to do something. People my age are having strokes and dying and I don't want to be one of them because I have high blood pressure and it's gone unchecked and it's not really gone unchecked because I do monitor it and I do try and not eat so much salt or whatever. But here lately, like I said, I've been eating like a trash goblin and I know that I was the cause of a lot of the issues that I've been having. We are our own worst enemy. So I am on a new path of health and it's going to be just how I live my life from now on. I've, I have to. It's a good thing I like the foods that I have to eat. Everything that's going to help me like salmon, dark leafy vegetables, uh, spinach, kale, mushrooms, beets, um, stuff like that. So yeah, I, uh, guess I'll say uh, that's it for now. I am going to go play Pokemon and go pick up some food for my husband and I and just kind of enjoy this beautiful Saturday. Like the weather has been perfect. It's been beautiful spring weather and then at night it's like really, really cold again. But during the day it's beautiful. It's spring. Um, it's just, I love it. So yeah, I hope that you guys are having a fantastic weekend. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, like I said, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you get a notification whenever I upload because it is sporadic. I am trying though this year. I said I'm going to, it's one of the things I'm going to do. Um, but you can follow me on all my social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, everything's all linked below. And yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.